I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hardik Sangani from ICICI Securities Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Faizan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Hardik here. Uh, hope you are keeping safe and are uh, doing well. Uh, thanks for joining us today on Q4 FI 2021 earnings call of Happiest Mind Technologies Limited on behalf of ICICI Security. I would like to thank the management of Happiest Minds for giving us the opportunity to host this earnings call. Today we have with us Mr. Ashok Suta, Executive Chairman, Mr. Joseph Ananta Raju, Vice Chairman, President and CEO, CES, Mr. Rajiv Shah, President and CEO, uh, DBS, Mr. Ram Mohan, President and CEO, IMSS, Mr. Venkat Raman Narayan, Managing Director and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Aurobindo Nanda, President, Operations and Deputy CEO, PES, Mr. Sunil Gujar, Head of Investor Relations, Mr. Praveen Darshankar, Company Secretary and Head of Legal. Uh, I will hand it over to Sunil for safe hour statement and to take the proceedings forward. Thanks and over to you, Sunil. Thank you, Hardik. Uh, very good morning to all. Welcome to this conference call to discuss the financial results for the fourth quarter and year ended March 31st, 2021. We trust all of you are keeping well and staying safe. I am Sunil from the Investor Relations team. Ashok will begin the call by sharing his views on the business environment in the context of the pandemic and our results. Venkat will then speak about our financial performance and operational highlights, after which we will have the floor open for Q&A. Before I hand over, let me begin with the safe power statement. During the call, we could make, we, we could make forward-looking statements. These statements are considering the environment we see as of today and obviously carry a risk in terms of uncertainty because of which the actual results could be different as outlined in the earnings release, which is available on our website. We do not undertake to update those statements periodically. Now, let me pass it on to Ashok. Over to you, Ashok. Thank you, Sunil, and good day to all. The second wave of the pandemic is sweeping through the country and we have, as a country, found ourselves terribly ill-prepared. The shortfalls include the inadequacy of oxygen, hospital beds, ICU facilities, and now even the vaccine. The wave has taken a large human toll. We at Happiest Minds have had our own share of heart-wrenching losses of colleagues and family members. We pray that the second wave will start subsiding soon, and the country continues to build its health infrastructure to be better prepared for future calamities. We wish that all of you will stay safe and stay healthy. I would like to share my deep appreciation to our happiest minds who did everything possible to support each other as a family, to our clients for trusting us with their most critical issues, and also to our stakeholders and extended communities around the world for their support. While India is suffering, the technology and IT services businesses are fortunate that we continue to work efficiently in a virtual environment and business is growing. The highlight for the year, FI21 for Happiest Minds, was our successful IPO. We have been able to fulfill all our promises and are grateful to our customers, our team, and all stakeholders who helped make this possible. As we begin FY22, we will look to achieving 20% organic growth as indicated at the time of the IPO. Our quarter four results are also outstanding, but I would be remiss if I do not mention that the quarter serial growth of 15.4% in dollar terms includes our PGS acquisition. The organic serial growth quarter to quarter of 8.9% itself is very creditable. Uh, FY21 was a year where every business unit, every geography, every center of excellence delivered excellent results. This is reflected in the average annual revenue per customer increasing from $615,000 in quarter one to $737,000 uh, in quarter four. The business we derive from our billion-dollar corporations, from $1 billion corporation customers, 
has gone up from 31% to 37% in the same period. Uh, none of this would have been possible, but for the robust delivery structure we have created and the excellent organization built. Our customer satisfaction surveys gave us an NPS score of 57. Uh, the Great Places to Work survey had 92% of our persons saying that Happiest Minds is a great place to work. Both these numbers are record-breaking for us and in the top runs for our industry. Before I pass on to Venkat, I want to close by sharing our conviction that technology adoption and advancement are imperative for a better world. We at Happiest Minds will leverage it to bring a meaningful difference to all our stakeholders. Thank you, and Venkat, over to you. Thanks, Ashok. Good morning, and I trust all of you are safe and well. I'll begin by giving an overview of our consolidated performance for the year ended March 31st, 2021, followed by that for the fourth quarter. It will be slightly longer than usual. Our operating revenues in US dollar for the year was 104.6 million, showing a growth of about 6.3% over the previous year. Now, that's the only dollar number that I would be talking about uh, as far as annual results go. And all numbers, unless stated otherwise, would be in rupees. Our total income for the year was 798 crores, showing a growth of 11.7%, which is a solid number. This growth that we have shown is much better than what we had suggested or guided at the time of our IPO. We had said that we would be relatively flat given the pandemic situation. We're very happy to state that we have done much better. Like Ashok mentioned, I too would be remiss if I do not highlight that our revenues for the year included revenue from the acquisition of PGS, the company we had acquired during January 2021. So our annual results has the effect of three months of net revenue from PGS, because as you will recall, PGS was a large customer of ours as well. Our revenue growth for the year was broad-based and all our BUs had shown growth driven by the demand environment across our chosen verticals. Coming to margins, EBITDA margins for the year expanded significantly to 27% compared to the 15.8% in the previous year. As I've been con continuously saying in earlier quarters, we have this improvement thanks to one, growth in revenues, improved utilization and realization, lower attrition, and reduced SGNA cost on account of the scale that we are building up, and also the savings on account of reduced rentals due to the continued work from home scenario, reduced travel and visa costs, and many other administrative costs on account of the pandemic. Our profits before tax for the year was 186 crores at 23.3% of revenues. This has again shown a growth of 153% over the year. On PAT, we closed the year with 162.4 crores, a growth of 127% over the previous year. Our average tax for the year was about 12.7% compared to that of 2.7% in the previous year. With this year's profits, we have wiped out all our brought forward tax losses and our average tax rate is likely to only go up from the next year. Some highlights for the year would be ROC of 31% and ROE of 30%, industry leading numbers, revenue CAGR of 18% over the FI18 period, healthy free cash flows of 99%, so you can almost say almost all our EBITDA falling to our uh, cash balance. For the year, we generated 215 crores of free cash flow, healthy cash balance at year end of about 550 crores. We closed the year with 3,228 happiest minds, which is a net addition of 562 plus. And diversity in our workforce is about 24.5%, a number which we want to take up and we are consistently working on. Now coming to the quarter's performance, operating revenues in US dollars was 30.2 million, showing a sequential growth of 15.4%, year over year growth of 18%. Again. I would like to bring to your attention that we had three months of PIMCOR uh, global services in these numbers. In rupee terms, our total income for the quarter was 224 crores versus 201 crores in the previous quarter, showing a sequential growth of 11.2% and year-over-year growth of 176 Now, 
even if I were to uh, remove the ten core numbers, our quarter on quarter and year over year growth for the uh, for the quarter has been significant. Our EBITDA margin for the quarter stands at 26.3 percent and 59 crores, compared to 29.7 percent and 59 crores in the previous quarter. So, in absolute terms, we have remained flat on EBITDA, and the decrease uh, in percentage terms is primarily on account of drop in other income of five and a half, five point six crores, and also increasing in salary salary payout provisions. So what, what's happening is we have started giving pay increases effective April 1st, but the effect of the increase or the quantum of increase takes into account our first quarter as well. So as per accounting, we have provided for the portion of pay increase relating to that quarter in the quarter. So that essentially is about nine crores. So as you will notice, if you remove the other income uh, drop, our operational performance has been very good because it also takes into account the pay increase that I just talked about. On PBT, we were at about 49.3 crores and 22% compared to 53.2 crores and 26.5% uh, over the previous quarter. In addition to decrease in other income and the pay increase that I just talked about, we also had an amortization of intangibles because we had acquired PGS came along with it are some intangibles from an accounting standpoint. We have to amortize that intangible, which is about 2.2 crores, and that has hit the PBT number. Coming to PAT, we closed the quarter with 36 crores versus 42.15 crores in the previous, uh, which is essentially is on account of the drop, is essentially on account of the pay increase that I talked about, the other income drop, and the uh, and the amortization cost of intangibles uh, that we had in the quarter. To summarize, we have put a good and better operational performance for the quarter. So that, that's what I would like to highlight. Another highlights for the quarter is we ended with 173 customers, a net addition of 23, 23 from the previous, addition of nine new billion dollar corporations to our client list, improvement in the profile of large clients and also average revenues per client, which Ashok referred to, Utilization of about 83% compared to 81.6% in the previous quarter. Voluntary attrition continuing to drop and it's at about 12.4% compared to 13.1% in the previous quarter. Now, finally, basis our solid cash generation and our, after review of our capital allocation strategies, the board has recommended a maiden dividend of rupees three per share. This will be a cash outflow of approximately rupees 44 crores. And this recommendation is subject to shareholders' approval at the ensuing AGM on July 7. Coming to the outlook, we have exited the fiscal with a strong demand environment, reflecting in our strong order book and deal pipeline. A major part of our revenues are coming from economies which are slowly coming back to normalcy from the pandemic. With our strong positioning, which covers a large part of the digital spectrum, we believe we are well poised to grab opportunities in the space. While our own country and home base, as Ashok mentioned, is reeling from record levels of infections since March. This is worrying and we are keeping a close watch on the situation, including the pace of vaccination and hope it picks up quickly. We are indeed facing our own set of problems with our own employees, happiest minds as we refer to them as, yet if it's getting affected either directly or indirectly. We also had two of our bright young minds being taken away from us by this cruel disease. Uh, during the past few weeks, and our hearts and prayers go out to them. The company is extending support to our people in the best manner we can, in, we can, including coming out with a plan which is in the works to help beneficiaries of the unfortunate happiest minds. From a business friend, this pandemic has led to increase in absence uh, due to people taking time to recover. This could have a slight adverse effect on our delivery timelines and billing. Considering the different moving pieces mentioned above, our aspiration is to continue growing organically in the medium and long term at about 20%, as we had called out in our, uh, as Ashok had called out in the press release. As for margins, I've been consistently saying we aspire to have our EBITDA to be in the range of 22 to 24% as a uh, as a continued number, as some pandemic-induced benefits may normalize in the near or medium term. Coming to our profits after tax, our effective tax rate has moved up from 
2.6% in FY19 to 12.7% in FY21 and should be in the range of anywhere between 20 to 24% starting FY22 because we, we have wiped out all our past losses. I hope I've been able to give you a good overview of our financials. All these numbers and data points are available on our website. Investor presentation has been uploaded therein. Please do take time to go through that. Stay safe and well. With this, I open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Hardik Sangani from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. So, this is like a couple of questions. So, firstly, in terms of our guidance, so uh, is it, uh, is, even if I consider our monthly exit rate, 20% uh, uh, seems a uh, number on a very conservative side. So, uh, am I correct in uh, assessing that? And in terms of margin, just wanted to uh, understand what will be the impact of page hike uh, Q1 onwards. Uh, and the third question is the, our increase in our dollar billion accounts. So how uh, quickly can we scale up to our uh, you, uh, 1 million dollar accounts uh, in this year? Uh, and uh, as we return to our growth uh, trajectory, so any additional investments in uh, sales and marketing needed to drive that growth? Uh, thank you. I have follow questions, but I will come back in the week. Okay. Yes, thanks, Ashok. So, on the uh, revenue growth, we have been talking about 20% in the medium and long term. So, you are right. We had acquisitions uh, which which have been integrated in the first quarter. That's going to lead to a higher growth uh, over the uh, year over year when you look at FI22. Uh, so, that's that's obviously there. But what I gave you as a 20% was a guidance for the longer and uh, medium term. And the word that I used was organically trying to grow. You understand? So we, we will not be able to split inorganic growth and organic growth forward. This is the first quarter, so we have the numbers. But as we integrate, the business becomes a whole. The split becomes a lot more difficult to uh, determine. For FI22, we will uh, show a higher growth. Uh, than what we, we hope to uh, show a higher growth. And as you know, we have not been giving you guidance. On the margin front, uh, like I said, the, the aspiration or guidance that we have been giving is 20 to 24%, and we have hit 27% for the year. Uh, and the impact of pay increase, I give you, I gave you the number. Uh, it's about nine crores for a quarter. So that, that's the number that has hit us in uh, Q4. And you can that that would be the number that would impact us going forward as well. So, this, if you take out the impact of drop in other income, then the normalized operational performance is better than the last quarter. And uh, with revenue growth happening, that's only like it will improve as we go forward. While I say this, I have to also caveat that there is a huge uh, demand issue out there in the market uh, because uh, not demand issue, I would say supply uh, issue. So while demand is uh, strong and showing a huge amount of, uh, I, I can't even use the word recovery, but it's it's coming back uh, quite strongly. We will have uh, we will have supply issues which will have an impact on the pay pay numbers that you pay for additions or for replacement. Uh, what was the third question, Hardik? Yes, question on the million dollar accounts, which maybe Joseph can take up. Sure. Yes, yes sir. Sure. Uh, so in terms of million dollar accounts, uh, uh, you know, as we uh, shared earlier as well, uh, there is a structured process to, uh, you know, we, we do use a land and expand strategy and there's a structured process that we use uh, for account mining and, uh, you know, expansion in accounts. And we'll continue doing that with 
the account development plan and cross bio selling being the uh, you know the the fulcrums for this uh, growth and uh, you know even though you see in the investor presentation that the number of uh, uh, million dollar accounts has shown an increase from q3 to q4 of 1 but if you take it on a quarterly analyzed basis that number is two or three uh, two uh, uh, higher by another two two uh, customers so this is something that will be a focus area for us and uh, you know we will look at how do we uh, convert more of our customers into million dollar customers i could just add to and that investment in sales if, if I, can i just add a bit to your million dollar observation uh, joseph sure, sure. and uh, you know if you all will uh, apart from the fact that uh, there has been this improvement in the total number of million dollar accounts I think if you see our fact sheet, and I believe we have given this data in the fact sheet also, uh, the $5 million to $10 million accounts, which were actually nil in FY20, have gone up to three in FY21. So you can see that there's an upward movement even within the split of accounts, which are uh, which is really also what has contributed to the average uh, dollar uh, per, per customer dollar revenue per customer having gone up, number which both Venkat and I gave to you. Go ahead, Joseph, sorry. That's right, that's right. Sure, sure. And the last, uh, the fourth question you had, Hathik, was on investment in uh, sales and account management, and that is an ongoing investment. Uh, we're looking at, you know, for some of our larger uh, customers, the ones that are uh, $5 million plus or who have the potential to get there, we're look at, looking at having uh, dedicated account managers maybe dedicated to an account or to two accounts and so that is an ongoing uh, exercise where we will identify these accounts you know either internally or, or or from the market bring in people who have the ability to grow these accounts and take ownership for the client relationship so that will be an ongoing uh, investment sure. along with that we're also looking at strengthening our domain and verticals so that we can uh, you know play a more strategic role and be an advisor to our customers so that will be another area where we'll be uh, focusing and investing during the year uh, uh, thank you. Uh, we can uh, take the next uh, question. Uh, okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vimal Gohil from Union AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, so just uh, firstly, just a clarification. Uh, you said that the quarter quarter growth organically was about 8.9%. Is that right? That that's right, Nimal. Okay, okay. Fair like I said, so, uh, uh, it's it's an approximate nine percent uh, in right. dollar that's terms. Dollar growth. That's a dollar growth. Back the right. inter. Yeah, that's a dollar growth, operational dollar growth. Right. So if I were to just uh, derive the uh, you know the uh, in, uh, absolute contribution from Pimcore, the uh, approximate the number comes to about one point seven percent. So this uh, the the acquisition has been integrated for the full three months. Uh, so if I were to just annualize that number, that uh, revenue comes to about seven uh, seven million dollars. And if I were, uh, were to remember the press release that you had given by, uh, by when you had acquired Pimcore, that number was about ten million. Uh, so uh, 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 what you uh, if you could just explain, uh, has the revenue decreased or are we setting off the existing number? No, no, no. No, no, no. So uh, Riman, if you look at the press release, you would have also uh, recollected that. The PIMCORE was an existing $3 million account for us. So your numbers are in the ballpark perfectly right. So you have an intercompany set up. We bill into PIMCORE and PIMCORE bills uh, to the customer earlier. From uh, this quarter, we have to do the intercompany elimination. Perfect. Perfect. Fair enough. Uh, sir, and uh, uh, if you, uh, just a couple of data points. Uh, if you could just give me the uh, subcontracting cost for Q4 FY21. And the uh, you know the pass through license cost for Q4 FY21 and FY21. So we don't have any pass through licensing cost, and then subcontractors we'll get back to you before the call ends. I'll just take that data point. Okay. Okay. We we don't have pass through subcontractors also. If I if that was the question, we don't have pass through subcontractors also. We right. because you know the current uh, demand situation and the and the travel ban from India to US, when there are requirements or when there are gaps in what we need, 
to deliver we have local uh, people coming in and joining us for delivery so that's the subcontractor cost so we'll, we'll give you that number before the call ends sure sure so this number in the last quarter was about 18 crores so that is what i'm referring to just in case yeah sure sure we'll we'll i know we'll give you both we'll give you both. And, and the license and the software uh, license cost that i'm referring to is about was about 12 crores last year in fy20 uh maybe if you can just give me the same number for fi21 maybe we can take it offline as well no problem uh yeah i uh, we could take it offline because we don't uh, we don't have any uh, soft uh, software uh, i say resale at all if at all it is there it would be part of some uh, integrated delivery that we are doing for the customer but if accounting wise we, if you have called it out i'll give you that number and rental wouldn't that number include say, our microsoft licenses for our internal use No, no. Uh, this is for billing to customers, Ashok. Okay, okay. I didn't know what number he was referring to, so that's fine. Yeah, he's referring to uh, buying and selling of licenses. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, if I were to just look at your uh, look at your metrics uh, closely, uh, this quarter you had about a hundred bips improvement in utilization. Uh, you had about four hundred bips uh, increase in offshore. uh so uh, uh and obviously you have had this impact of data uh but if you just take me through this margin bridge uh what has uh, you know uh, what were the other uh, negative impacts apart from data because your offshore increase and utilization increase to be uh, increase increase seem to be very strong uh you know and uh, uh, despite that if i were to look at your uh, uh, you know uh, quarter on quarter uh, ebitda margin excluding other income it is a slight fall So, yeah. uh, if you could just help me explain uh, uh, what what led to this fall, because these two uh, tailwinds, uh, per se, were fairly strong in my view, to you know sort of uh, negate the wage wage I can pay. Now, uh, a, a bit of margins, if you remove, uh, if you put back the nine crores of uh, pay increase that I talked about, we are better than where we are last time, right? Uh, so, that that's the first point. So, you have a, obviously removed the other income number, drop of five point six crores. Second is. Uh, nine crores of pay increase. Otherwise, there is no other significant uh, change in the business model, which which uh, which is which comes to my mind, which I need need to highlight. We have pretty much stayed the same. And there is absolute uh, obviously between EBITDA to PBT, we had the amortization of goodwill. Yeah, uh, see, we could have had some costs like the acquisition cost. Under in days we cannot capitalize, so you write it off. So there is some of those costs which have come, which are all one-time costs, which we are not. We are taking it as a uh, running cost rather than uh, uh, calling it out separately. So the real standout numbers are the pay increase that we have factored in, and uh, this uh, drop in other income, which obviously you called out. The third is the amortization of intangibles, and there. there are a few one time like uh, there could be some contract delays before because of which we would have not taken we would have taken the cost but not not taken the uh, revenues but those are all they, they get uh, regularized over a period uh, and and uh, you have provided for the wage increases uh, in this quarter so does that mean uh, that in the next quarter there could be a possibility of you know margin improvement on a sequential basis mm-hmm. no um, okay how this happens is the wage increase takes effect from april 1st but while communicating and calculating the budget that was uh, allocated for wage increases we we said that we are taking effect from january 1st so what happens is then you have to spread it over 5 months starting january so that's what we have five quarters got your point five quarters okay. sorry got it sir uh, Uh, and sir uh, lastly uh, you had a pretty good year in terms of cash generation also uh, you already made one good acquisition in pimcor uh, uh, if you could just highlight uh, you know I, i understand that valuations are very expensive right now but uh, any any other acquisition there in the pipeline what are we looking at uh, you know in terms of uh, acquisitions uh, joseph would you want to add joseph yes so you know we continue to uh, uh, engage with our investment investment bankers and you know we've uh, uh, shared our uh, criteria for them uh, you know i think once we make progress on this well we will uh, share that uh, with you all so that's an ongoing process we are talking to a few 
possible candidates and we have our criteria laid out that uh, the leadership team the eb has put together for uh, you know the candidates that we would like to consider so we're following a structured process and uh, we'll get back to you when we, you know when we make progress sure. but i might also add there's no immediate closures in the offing and you really never know how these things go because sometimes uh, it may take you eight months to negotiate a deal, and you look at 20 companies before you close one. So it's a typical case of an acquisition where we need to be very careful. You're also absolutely right that valuations are running high. So uh, clearly nothing that needs to be factored into anything that is likely to happen in the uh, course of the near future or the next uh, few quarters for that matter. Understood, sir. Uh, fair enough. I'll, I I uh, I have a few more questions, but I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishit from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, congrats. Congrats on a good growth uh, this quarter. Uh, so the first question uh, is to Venkat. Venkat, uh, you just mentioned that we've taken a nine crore impact and wage hikes in this quarter is that correct that's right that's right so if if i take that off right uh, our wage hikes have increased by three percent quarter and quarter right uh, but our headcount has increased by about 12 percent quarter and quarter how should we sort of look at that bridge is it large part of the hiring has happened through the end of the quarter is it we added 528 people across the year so wage hike uh, uh, wage hike is basis their uh, whatever tenure within the company, right? So you have the tenure within the company, the various grades. So you can't do a straight allocation of that sort. If you really look at it, it's nine crores into five. The impact for the year would be about uh, nine forty-five to fifty crores would be the wage hike that that would have to be factored in. But I don't. I didn't get how you came to the three percent number. No. So, so our employee benefit expenses is one twenty three crores versus hundred and ten crores last quarter, right? Now, if I take off nine crores from this number, it's an incremental number of three and a half, three point four crores, right? That's a three percent QQ jump. Versus headcount is increased by eleven, eleven and a half, twelve percent in fact, QQ. From two eight eight five to three two two eight. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Head count, head count increase also has the PIM core numbers, which has happened because of the integration, right? Which would be at 100 people, roughly. So that's that, that, that is more than that. Or almost uh, 86, 20. Uh, oh. About 100 and, 107 people. Additional 107 people. But they, they would still be in the wage. About, uh, 89. But they'll still be in the employee benefit expenses, no? Okay. No, no. Uh, what is, what's the question? Are you saying that the pay increase looks lower? No. no. So the question is, uh, the, uh, it, it appears that possibly the head, large part of the headcount uh, hiring would have happened through the end of the quarter, and that's possibly one of the reasons why maybe employee benefit expenses. Uh, growth looks lower, and maybe some of that impact will come in the next quarter. Is 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 what I'm trying to guess. No, yeah, we have got. If you look at it, yes. you're right. Which is what I said. 2,658 happiest minds at the end of first quarter, and it ends with FI 21Q3 at 2,885. So you got the addition of about let's say uh, 200 people. But by the end of the fourth quarter, we have gone up to 3,228. Okay, understood. I'll, I'll take this question offline. Over. Yeah. yeah. Right, Hardik, you've had a yeah. higher number of people added in the last quarter and in March. And in March. Thank you for that. That's right. That's increased by 12. Yeah, so we had more people added in towards the end of the second half of February and in uh, correct, March. Correct, correct, correct. And that cost will come into play in uh, Q1. Uh, Q1. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Higher that market. Yeah, and okay. they are higher at market wages, no? So, that, that's uh, fine. So. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, that makes sense. Uh, so, uh, from a margin perspective, right, while uh, so we're getting at 26.3 on EBITDA, right, uh, and going into the next year, when I look at 
let's say some of the benefits will continue related to let's say travel maybe operating expenses that you sort of highlighted right uh we could be materially above the guidance of 22 to 24 percent is that assumption correct or do you think that uh maybe uh attrition could be a factor maybe war for talent could be a factor which could lead us to to closer to our band of margin level uh, rishit the question that has often come is what do you think is a sustainable margin so correct. when i gave you 22 to 24 that's a sustainable margin number Uh, basically mm-hmm. the model um uh, the things that could change in favor or against there are uh, your uh, manpower cost people people cost or the billing rates all of that which is typical of the business model that we have uh this what we see in addition to that is the the pandemic benefits uh, the the change in business model working from home right now uh, how quickly we come back to office those are uh, no almost nil travel Uh, overseas making making do with uh, video conferencing and teams and uh, zoom and all of those facilities and that's adding to the margin so the, the question that has come up is what do you think venkat is the sustainable margin so that that's the number that i've been saying and um, uh, one number which i'm happy to be uh, uh, proved wrong but the number on sustainable margins happens to be 22 to 24% Okay, okay. But just uh, from an FI twenty two, some of these benefits will continue. That essentially means we could be uh, at a higher level. But when these uh, costs come back, is where this is more like a sustainable number. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we were. I might just add one thing here. But to offset that, there is a likelihood, as we mm-hmm. indicated, that the market for talent is very high. There is going to be a pressure on attrition, and to that extent, it can offset. that one advantage that we've been highlighting okay understood uh super and uh, just uh, if you could provide a little bit of color on the tcv and pipeline uh, and I, i think during the ipo we kept mentioning that you know a large part of the deals are so so right uh, are you seeing an increase in rft invites for us in general you should uh, mean that some of the deals could come on the table uh, a little more in an indirect form uh, so yeah uh, in terms of uh, in, in the In terms of RFP, we do have a few RFPs that we are uh, responding to, maybe uh, uh, a little more than usual, but we've not seen a huge uh, move or shift uh, towards RFPs, at least in the uh, segments and the type of customers that we are working with. And in terms of, you know, we don't uh, really track PCV, we mentioned that earlier as well. Uh, what I can mention is that the pipeline, did see good growth uh, during the the quarter uh, q4 over q3 and we saw a uh, uh, you know 10% increase in pipeline quarter on quarter and that's something that you know we've been uh, tracking on year on year as well you know if you compare it to the uh, march the you know, to 2020 there's been a good uh, growth in pipeline which we now need to work on and convert into uh, you know deals during q1 You know, I would like to add that, frankly, I hate this number of order booking, which people give and we don't give. And also, I don't like that pipeline number. And the reason is this, when people give you your order book, you don't know whether that order is going to be executed in year one, year two, year three. And particularly for the larger players, many of them are very large orders which get executed over a period of time. We also have annuity business which comes in. So unless you split that, that number gives you no idea on the real growth. Likewise with pipeline, though Joseph has told you that it has gone higher, which is a good thing, but the pipeline itself has to be analyzed. How much of it is weighted average uh, probability of converting that? And these things can be so binary that you really do not know uh, what that number will translate to. So I think a far better indicator of where we are heading is the sort of guidelines that we've been giving you as we've talked, although we give no formal guidelines. We've talked about 20% organic growth. You've already worked out amongst yourself what the net increase that will take place due to the PIMCO uh, acquisition. Mm-hmm. You know pretty much where we are heading in terms of growth. I think that is the more relevant number than saying, hey, where are we on pipeline? Because all of that can turn out to be either bonanza or fiction. You really don't know which way those given orders and pipeline orders will go. 
in terms of when it comes to precaution. Understood. Understood. Uh, that's fair. I'll, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just want to get one clarification. You said celeriac with, with effect from April. Then why it get impact your on JFM quarter, which I'm not very clear if you can help me understand that part first. Right. Uh, yeah, heard that. Sorry, I was on mute. So, uh, what happens is we announced the increase to people saying that we will be doing it effective January 1st, but it will be payable from 1st of April. So, that, that's what happened. So, essentially, there's a communication to the group saying that uh, we, we are doing this, but because of uh, uh, the conditions and we couldn't complete the work, what we'll do is we will take the budget of January, February, March, assume that that number is available to us, put it into the budget, which is effective April 1st, and give it to you, roll it out from April 1st. So, okay, so the employee will get from January only. From April only. Yeah, but that is... Uh, no, case flow I understand, but from employee perspective, they get even for January, February, March hike in their salary in April month. Yes, uh, you can take it like that, but uh, it it doesn't work in the area system as, as you do it in the government of India. What happens is that pool is made available. See, what happens is uh, you have the delivery teams, uh, the entire operational team, they are given a pool to distribute amongst the teams basis the uh, appraisal rating or whatever. The pool, if it is 10, goes up to 12.5. That's what has happened. Understand. So broadly, uh, employee will get from January and there would be some kind of, so you are saying it is not area kind of thing, then how it works? I'm not very clear. Because JFM, you are providing 9 crore. No, so that's exactly what I said. So supposing in the normal course of events, I would have done it from January, I would have given a 10% increase from January. Correct? The next cycle comes up next January. Right? We couldn't uh, complete the process during the month of April, January, February, March. So what we said is, we'll do it effective April, but the budget that is given to the uh, teams is effective from January. So we gave it that two and a half percent was added to the budget of April and given. So effectively, it's twelve and a half percent. I'm just giving you a number, uh, which is effective April first. And you have to accrue and then the extra two and a half percent. Has to be accrued. And Correct. the extra two and a half percent gets gets distributed across the entire year from an employee standpoint. Correct. Of giving, uh, let's say, uh, in length of example, so you a ten percent increment, you'll give a twelve and a half percent increment. And so they'll get that money over the entire uh, uh, 12 months. Understand. Then normal, rather than giving normal, we give some extra salary to adjust for JFM uh, delay. Understand. Uh, second question is if you can... That's right. Understand. And uh, second question is about the outlook. If you can help us provide some perspective about uh, major vertical where we operate, at tech, BFS, and uh, so if you can just run through how you are seeing demand trend across vertical. And any differences in geography perspective in terms of strength in demand. Thank you. Sure, sure. So I'll, I'll take the, uh, Joe, and if you look at the uh, revenues and uh, uh, breakup across uh, geos, uh, you'll see that Middle East has done quite well for us because we had uh, uh, you know, one a large account from Pimco that got added, and one of our uh, you know, customers has grown quite well. So we're beginning to see good traction in Middle East. Europe also has grown well, and we continue to see traction. Uh, I think the, uh, the period of December, Jan, there was uncertainty there, uh, especially in UK, where we have a stronger presence. But with the vaccination going up over there, we're beginning to see business slowly come back to normal. Uh, US continues to, to do well. So. And India will have to see, I think Q, uh, Q1 will be a little muted given all that's happening out here, even though we do have a few uh, discussions going on. Uh, so that's from a geo perspective. And if you, if you see the uh, uh, verticals, uh, Edutech continues to do well for us. Uh, just the fact that 
uh, you know, uh, there's been such a huge shift in the way both schools and colleges uh, are uh, uh, you know educating, and they need to support uh, uh, multiple digital uh, 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 mediums and and channels for education, more hybrid. Uh, so, edutech continues to do well for us. We are seeing uh, retail as well, you know, uh, 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 especially with the Pimco acquisition. We have seen, if you see the percentage of revenue in uh, uh, retail also has gone up. And, you know, we continue to see opportunities around digital marketing, personalization, uh, you know, uh, and also the fact that many of them are moving away from uh, high cost uh, software to more open source, which leads to more opportunities for, you know, something like uh, Happiest Minds. And in industrial and manufacturing, you know, uh, Jan, I think customers are sort of making sense of what's happening. We've seen them starting, you know, manufacturing more around uh, factory automation, doing assessments, which should lead to uh, work down the line. And we're seeing more activity in the mid-sized uh, customers in industrial and manufacturing. High tech continues to do well. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's one vertical which recovered very quickly uh, in Q1 of last year. And it continues to see a fair bit of uh, uh, investment. So I'll just add one more thing. Uh, yes, uh, one more thing on top of you. I think that both of our CEOs of Sense uh, Analytics and IoT has also grown significantly over the last uh, year or so as well. So we continue to see more and more demand for uh, those sets of initiatives that we had invested much earlier. Uh, uh, both from Internet of Things as well as analytics. And uh, so while supported by our uh, verticals, supported by COEs, I think that 10 positive sentiments, I think we see the growth in most of the verticals as well as in the geographies. Yeah, just to add, uh, uh, automation is growing pretty well. Um, and we are seeing a significant growth from you know, quarter three to quarter four. And we also are seeing a good increase in the security services as well. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. If, if I can just give the data point on subcontractors, so that Bimal uh, is on the call. So we had 19.21 crores in Q4 compared to 18.03 in Q3. Thank you. Thanks, Sajan. The next question is from the line of Ramesh Taparia. Individual investor, please go ahead. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know whether there is any clear-cut uh, demarcation on succession plan and appointing some uh, somebody to take care of uh, the, business, the business in next one decade or so. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, no company has spelled out its succession plan as clearly as we have. And uh, there's a very nice article in Times of India, which by a coincidence is right here in front of me, because uh, which said the title was uh, Suta Restructures to Give Happiest Minds a Long Life. And uh, uh, the article highlighted, and we also went at pains to highlight this, by the way, in our presentations during the IPO, uh, whereby we said we've got perhaps the strongest top management that you can actually visualize, and it was actually put in place earlier. But the restructuring on how that will fit into the succession planning is what got defined around the time of the IPO. So uh, we have an executive board which individually and collectively function as the CEO of the company. And if you will see the results of the company in the last three years, this completely coincides with the period that the executive board has been in place. So they turned it around from what suddenly ran into a loss. Uh, there were really two years of decline, of which the second year was a loss. And then three years of absolutely fantastic growth after that under the leadership of the executive board. In addition, we've also now got uh, an executive vice chairman and the MD and CFO roles, uh, which were created as we were going public. And uh, so as a succession structure, it is really as complete as anything can be. Uh, you talked about is there something planned for a decade? I should also tell you, and this is really work in progress, uh, we've always had a five-year vision in the company. And our tenth here 
is uh, our 10th anniversary is 29th August. This time we decided, and we had a discussion on this, a first discussion only with our board, uh, uh, just yesterday for that matter, and it takes a lot of doing. And we decided that this time it's more important for us to look ahead uh, than ever before. And therefore, we are actually going to articulate a vision for uh, the next decade. But we will do that before our 10th anniversary, which is 29th August. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gupta from Fidelity. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just one clarification on this uh, wage increase again. So uh, the way you mentioned it, uh, uh, what my understanding is that, uh, so let's say this 9 crore quarterly impact uh, for, uh, for for few uh, will be paid out in next four quarters in equal installments in a way, right? So let's say 2 crore plus uh, in next four quarters. Is that the right understanding? That's, that's right, that's right, that is right. Okay, so for this quarter then, the 9 crore uh, imp impact that we have taken in the PNL, that that has the provision has been adjusted from other income. And so the 123 crore employee benefit expense does not include the 9 crore, right? No, 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 not, not, not from other income, it goes into operating expenses. Okay, the uh, other expenses which is like 420, uh, so 42 crores this quarter. Yes, right? yes, yes. It, you know, if you look at the SEBI format, it goes into employee benefits. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, so, okay, okay. So the incremental impact from wage hike would be, let's say, two and a half crore next quarter, which is like, uh, uh, no, okay, that's already been taken. Got it, got it. It, it will be lesser. It will be lesser by 2.25 or 2.5 crores. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Uppal from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity and the congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, just two questions from my side. Firstly, uh, what are the hiring plans of the company for FY22? Uh, we have seen a very strong hiring in FY21. Uh, so, given that uh, we are seeing an increase in the uh, increasing risk of you know attrition, uh, given the very high uh, active hiring market, so that's first question. Secondly, uh, in terms of the travel, media, and entertainment uh, vertical, how, how are you seeing the demand shaping up? Uh, given that we are seeing an increase in the domestic travel in US and Europe. Joseph, you should be taking some time. Please go ahead. Sure. So, coming to the attrition and hiring plans, uh, we have question our attrition level for FI21 is around 12%. And given this uh, increment that we have been speaking about so far, uh, we, and, and including that advance thing that happened to, you know, to the April month. We do not really expect any significant increase in attrition levels going forward. Uh, and with respect to hiring, we have multiple strategies at this point of time to fulfill the demand that is that we are seeing at this point of time. And that includes recruiting recruitment on our own, as well as you know increasing our intake of fresh graduates. Uh, kind of, we have also built an ecosystem of partners. Uh, from whom we are taking in partners. Our intake of partners has uh, increased significantly uh, in Q4, and we expect also to continue uh, in the year, year ahead also. Uh, besides that, we'll also be you know, continuing in our cross-skill and upskill of uh, people within, so that we'll be able to fulfill these demands that are coming up. The second part uh, to the question asked about TME. Yes. Yes, sir, sure. I'm, I'm taking that. The, you, you asked a question about TME, and let me break it up because yeah. we have travel and media entertainment uh, together over there. That's how we've classified it. But as we've mentioned earlier as well, the revenues from travel is minimal to uh, nil, actually, for us. And that really worked out well for us in FI21, uh, especially the earlier part of the year, because that was a vertical and segment that was hit quite badly. On uh, media entertainment, our focus has been more on digital media, the hot stars and the Netflix, and 
also the uh, media companies that are building su such platforms, you know, simple, uh, OT, more of OTT and uh, streaming companies, which is where a lot of the digital technologies that we, uh, uh, you know, that we, we are experts in around cloud, around uh, big data analytics, uh, AI, ML, uh, things like that are very uh, relevant out here. And we continue to see quite a lot of demand out there because most of the media companies are trying to reinvent themselves and uh, move more towards uh, streaming and subscription models. And uh, this is where, you know, uh, our focus is. Okay, thanks a lot. And all the best for such a new. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harit Shah from KR Choksi Shares and Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for the bonus. It was a fairly comprehensive you know, understanding of the business. So thank you very much for that. Uh, just uh, you know, a small data point. And so we had uh, mentioned about the subcontracting issue. Do we have that figure now with us? Uh, it was about uh, 18.6 crore, I think, last time. Uh, have you been able to get out that figure? The, that number I just mentioned is gone up to about 19 crores uh, this quarter, Harith. Okay, wonderful. I guess I may have kind of, uh, missed it out there. And uh, secondly, uh, so, you know, obviously now, uh, as you mentioned about the issues in terms of, uh, you know, it is the supply side and the requirement for, obviously, you know, for talent, given the kind of LV smooth output ahead. Uh, what would you say will be a stable kind of margin to, uh, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, a stable utilization kind of a range that you are would be comfortable with? So this quarter you were at 82.6 percent. So you, you, know, you think this could go back to maybe 77, 78 percent kind of a range that would be a sustainable number to go to? Yeah, I would like uh, request Nanda to talk about utilization. So Nanda, I think the question was, uh, what's a sustainable number on utilization? We, yeah, the sustainable numbers of utilization would be uh, around uh, eighty percent, between seventy-seven to eighty percent. That's what that's what we have been targeting. Uh, but uh, given the demand and all that stuff, the current utilization is at eighty-three, around eighty-three uh, percent. It, it may go up and down a couple of percentages depending on the demand and our ability to fulfill. But we'd like to retain it between seventy-seven to eighty percent. Okay, great. I think that was uh, by and large the question that I had. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just have two questions. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, any plan to uh, scale up revenue and delivery capability uh, in the on site location as we scale up? Uh, our size of the business. Do we see the need of that? Uh, so, uh, you know, as we, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, so that's an area that we've been focused on. In fact, in Q4, uh, in Q3, we have started an initiative to see how we can strengthen our uh, hiring uh, capability, recruitment capability in uh, US to start off with. And we actually brought a senior. Uh, leader on board to uh, lead that effort in U.S. who's based out of U.S. And we're beginning to see initial traction. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One is, as, as Venkat was mentioning, the ability to uh, have people travel from India is still limited and for the foreseeable future. It will be limited not because of visa, but more of pandemic uh, reasons. Right? And at the same time, in many of the digital initiatives, it would be useful to have people close to the customer to help them with some of the uh, you know, strategizing as as well as to uh, to help with you know understanding the customer better and account expansion. So we will be looking at uh, strengthening, beefing up our uh, numbers and capabilities on site. And again, from a domain and vertical uh, uh, perspective, uh, we would uh, we, it would be good to have these some of these domain experts who can work closely with customers in their time zone and travel when uh, possible. Okay, but these are uh, and also yes, please. and also as Joseph this is Ram here, and also as Joseph mentioned that we are growing, uh, uh, you know, significantly in the Middle East. And our endeavor is also to get more and more people uh, on site there locally, you know, so that you know our turnaround time and uh, 
you know, providing services uh, quickly will be helpful. So uh, we are looking at more and more uh, local and on-site recruitment as we move forward. So, uh, so you are trying to say uh, across the uh, delivery uh, level, not just at the <clears throat> subject matter expert level or sales level, right? That's right. Yeah, you, that is correct. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, another question was, uh, you know, we have a long tail of clients. Do we plan to clear them over time, or do we see potential as well as bandwidth? Uh, with the company to scale them over time. Raji, want to take this, Raji? Yeah, so, so we, we do. Yes. 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 So we go through quite a bit of rigorous process on looking at, even when we sign the contract, we look at the three year projections and what is the potential, not projection, but potential of that customer uh, uh, from the growth perspective. So we are quite diligent on that aspect. Uh, at the same time, if we don't see that growth uh, coming through, or if you are not able to add value to the customer's end goal, uh, we do decide to, to uh, get a partnership or relationship with the customer. So well, well defined process for a long period of customers. And uh, in most of our businesses, or all of our businesses last year, we took a very strong uh, look at and fresh look at all the long tail accounts that, were, uh, accounts that we had. And we have to clean up quite a bit as well. Right. So, uh, uh, so this if, you, year if, you the, if, if, if you notice the average revenue per customer at the beginning of the year was $615,000 and we've ended the year at 737. So that's, that's reflecting what Raji just, uh, the strategy or approach we've taken, uh, you know, towards our customers. Right. And uh, lastly, uh, any flavor you would like to give on, uh, you know, likely growth driver for you in terms of vertical? I think you gave clarity on the media, but more other verticals if you could talk about. Which is just if I start and then uh, uh, well, can I yeah. So I think that there are a couple of things. One is that with our acquisition of uh, uh, PGS, uh, we see it uh, in more than 80 percent of the brand faces in retail cpg world uh, other 20 percent or so in manufacturing side so leveraging and complementing the strengths of each other uh, and now is fully integrated we see a larger growth in some of those areas at the same time i think that industry itself retail cpg was uh, really revaluing their model uh, and the business drivers last year I think that uh, now there is a little bit of clarity as far as which direction are they taking. So with PGS, at the same time, maturity of the model itself that the industry has uh, specified, we see a growth in that those areas. Manufacturing, I think, again, the same thing uh, from uh, alternative ways of uh, supply chain logistics, uh, integrated devices, et cetera, connected devices uh, will drive a larger growth for us as well. And of course, our core uh, verticals of edutech and uh, high tech uh, continue to see alternative business models that we are part of the customer's larger digital transformation journey uh, and we'll see continue continue growth of those verticals as well right right and just lastly a clarification uh, this venkat uh, you said the sustainable margin for us are 22 to 23 percent uh, it was that number right 22 to 24 percent is what uh, I've been mentioning. Okay, this is the, uh, you know, uh, like uh, three year, five year kind of a uh, aspirational band we would like to Correct. bring. Correct. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot and best of luck for the year. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of Shivam Saxena from ICICI Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, thank you for uh, taking my question. So in the presentation, you have mentioned that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic could decrease our customers' technology spend. So are you seeing any early trends on billing rates uh, that uh, customers would be negotiating in any segment-wise, uh, uh, any color on the uh, vertical-wise uh, uh, dec uh, decline in spends right now? Uh, wasn't yes, the question was it is there any is there a decline in spend in any of the verticals 
Yeah, yeah, right, right. Also, focus on the rate, I think, Joseph, on the question. This opportunity is not happening. Wait, but go ahead. Sure. So, Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. So, in terms of uh, uh, demand, as you know, all the verticals that we are present in, we are seeing uh, demand in all of them. It could vary uh, across verticals, but all of them have increased demand, uh, even as compared to uh, Q3 or in Q1 as compared to Q4. And that's because most of the companies have uh, realized that uh, digital is the way for them. It's not a competitive advantage. It's a necessity now. And what they were thinking of doing over maybe two, three, four years, they realized they need to really accelerate because consumer behavior has changed, and it's also being driven by their competition. So demand is uh, is, 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 is good uh, across verticals. Uh, in terms of uh, rate increase, while there could be some uh, one or two customers who, who could be asking for rates in some years, but overall we've not seen any pressure on rate. Uh, just given the demand and also the space that we are in, you know, in the digital space where the, uh, where the demand has been quite high for the last uh, six months, so we don't anticipate rate pressure uh, in, in FI22. Don't you see the retail segment uh, asking for uh, low because of malls being shut down? So retail segment not uh, asking for some uh, decline in spends going forward? Rajiv, you want to take this? No, uh, no, sir, we have not uh, experienced anything from the rate uh, negotiations or asking the customers asking. But this is, in the pandemic situation, uh, I think there is an increased need for them to adapt to digital uh, technologies at the, way, at the same time looking at the alternative business model. So I think from an overall uh, run the business, probably support maintenance areas, uh, there is a reduction in the overall spend. But from the newer technologies perspective, to take advantage of uh, positivity that is coming in in the US and European market, uh, I think that we have not seen any uh, uh, renegotiation from the rate and perspective. Also, Rajiv, <clears throat> uh, wouldn't our retail include all our e-commerce business? Which is of course growing and added yes, on further. And if that is the case, then that is at least the premium and not at any discount. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Hardik Sangani for closing comments. Hey, hi, thank you. Uh, thank you, Faisal. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the call. Uh, uh, I thank uh, management of Happiest Mac for giving us the opportunity to host a Q4 earnings call. Uh, now I hand over the call to Sunil for the closing comments. Thanks, Hardik. Thank you for joining us today. We thank ICSI Securities for hosting this call on our behalf. We look forward to interacting with you. You can reach out to us on ir at happiestminds.com. Stay safe and healthy. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.